A choice sets before you now Living or dying Blessing or cursing And know the time has come around To turn from your fighting And rest in His mercies Choose life that you might lead that he gives he gives you forever choose life the way that is true from the one who chose you your father in heaven oh, choose life choose life that you might be the life that he gives say he, he gives you forever Welcome to Choose Life, a program of All Christians Fellowship Mission, a caring church raising Christ-like disciples who will be agents of transformation in the world. Let's now join God's servant, Reverend William Okoye, for today's message. I want to share with you the characteristics of a change agent. Number one characteristic of a change agent is that a change agent is one who has been changed himself. Why? Because you cannot give what you don't have. It is only changed people that can change the world. Unfortunately, many Nigerians want change, but we are not ready to change. We want change to happen as long as it allows us to continue to do our own thing, our own way. Let change happen elsewhere. If we as individuals refuse to change, it will be difficult for transformation to come. So you see that there are things that we have to do individually. Where we are, we don't only say, look, as far as I'm here, things must be done properly. And I'm going to insist that everybody here, or like you are in a queue for something and somebody else start coming to do this. Thing. It is your responsibility to say, no, you cannot. And I let every other person not to allow that person on the line. You insist that the right thing is done. There are people who don't like cleanliness. Government has gone to the extent of getting people who go and risk their life to clean our roads. And yet you see people who say they are normal. They will be eating and dropping things from their car. I am saying this to say that if change will come, it will take each one of us taking responsibility for the change. About instance said something. He said that for us to do things the way we have always done them and expect different results is one of the definitions of insanity. So it is madness for you to continue to do things the way you have always done and you're expecting something to change. Re-examine the way you are living your life and how you are acting in the office and so on and begin to do something about that correct yourself see that the right thing is done some people are paid by government they go to the office and sign their name and go away pursuing their own business and at the end of the month they are paid many christians i'm not talking of unbelievers christians speaking in tongues and casting out devil you don't have conscience and when they start agitating for increment in pay, they will be the first people. What are you producing that you want your salary to be increased? And the work they are doing, they are not passionate about it. They are not doing it with a sense of passion and desire to add value to move the country forward. That is why many of them will not seek to gain more knowledge, to improve in what they are doing in order to deliver quality and better services. As long as their salaries are coming, our nation will not develop that way. And I believe that it takes change people to change the nation. It takes change people to change the world. Born again, spirit feed Christians stands a better chance to be used as instruments to change this nation. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away. Everything becomes, you're already a changed person inside. Allow that to affect every other area of your life and then pass it on. 
pass the change on. William Wilberforce said something. Look at what William Wilberforce said. How many of you know that Wilberforce put his life on the line to stop slave trade? How many of you know he's a Christian brother, born again Christian? And this is what he said. Only change people change the world. Look at what he said. He said, Wilberforce believed strongly that the destinies of nations could best be influenced by deeply committed followers of Christ and that conversion to Christ was a person's most political action as well as religious. He said, John, the fact that you are born again is a political action to change your community. You already made a political statement by being born again. Because after he gave his life to Christ, though he was a member of parliament, he said to his pastor that God has called him into the ministry. He wants to leave his legislative work and become a pastor. Thank God for an enlightened pastor. Pastor said, don't leave your legislative work. You are already a pastor there. Pastor there. That's the call of God on your life. Make a difference there. That is from where he changed the whole history of humanity. In that position, you are a minister of the gospel. Wherever you, God has planted you, God wants you to brighten that environment. Do what? Clean up that environment. Establish the rule of the kingdom of God over that sphere of human activity or influence because God has planted you as his minister as his agent of change right there that is what Christianity is all about Christianity is not what is practiced within the four walls of the church Christianity helps you to make a difference in the world wherever you are and there's something that Rick Warren said about this Rick Warren said the most serious problems afflicting our society today are manifestly moral many of the problems that we are confronted with as a nation are moral problems behavioral and spiritual and therefore are remarkably resistant to government cures government cannot use their power to stop corruption corruption is a moral problem they can use law enforcement agents to bring people to book punish them and so on but as long as they are around looking they will not be corrupt but anywhere they are not able to check people will hide and do it because they are not changed from inside but when they are changed from inside they will not do what is wrong whether you are there or not hallelujah yeah. so Rick Warren said spiritual revival is our only solution and pastors are the most strategic change agents because they sit over congregations of righteous people. People who want to see that things are done right. The second characteristic of a change agent is that a change agent must have a right sense of value. What does that mean? One of the greatest problems that has held our nation back from developing is our distorted sense of value. We don't know what is really or what are really important in life. Our values are turned upside down. We value money more than we value value human beings that is why we have to kill kill our mother kill our fathers do anything just to get money because our values are distorted and as long as we have that distortion in our sense of value we cannot bring about the needed change in the society or wherever we are and that is why christians stand the best chance to facilitate transformation in this nation if we heed the injunctions of jesus christ and take his teachings serious and apply them in our own life jesus said the life of man does not consist in the abundance of the things which is what is he talking about he's saying that god's people should have a different sense of value the world said that the life of man consists in the abundance of the things which he has they say if you have money you are in heaven if you don't have money you are in hell but jesus said the life of man is not measured the importance of anybody is not measured by the amount he has in his bank account the life of man does not consist in the abundance of the things which he has he said what shall it profit a man if he shall get the whole world and lose his own soul the bible says good name is better than riches that these are biblical values now when you allow your life to be ruled by sound biblical values you will think differently from the world your mindset will be a different mindset what is important to the world will not be what is important to you in my book discovering what is really important in life i wrote about king solomon who experienced wealth power honor fame and sensual pleasure all in great abundance in fact he saw earthly life at its best yet they added up in the end to emptiness and disillusionment Solomon's primary purpose in writing the book of Ecclesiastes may have been to share his regrets and first-hand testimony with others before he died so they will not make the same mistakes he made. Solomon established forever the utter futility of basing one's value in life on earthly possessions and personal ambition. Emptiness. That is why he said, vanity upon vanity, all is what? 
vanity. At the end of all his writing, the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. So as Christians, we have a different set of value. We have a different drive and passion. What drives our life? And that is why in all Christians, we have chosen to make our motto, love God and love people. And the reason why we did that is to help direct your sense of value. If that becomes your priority, as Jesus said, is the highest priority, the greatest commandment, that's the highest priority, the highest value. Love God and love people. If you live your life based on those two laws of loving God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind and everything you have and loving others as you love yourself, you will live a fulfilled life. You will live a blessed life. Because if you love God with all your heart, your highest priority in life will be to please God at all costs. No matter what it costs me, I will do what will put a smile on the face of God. That God will be proud of me. That when God remembers me, he's happy. Because there are people who, when God remembers, the Bible says, he regretted that he made them. May God not regret that he created you. Be like Noah, that when he remembered Noah, he found consolation from the heartbrokenness that others are causing him. If you love your neighbor as you love yourself, before you do anything that will affect anybody, the first question you will ask is that if I'm in their position, how will I want others to treat me? The answer will come quickly you, because you will know how you want others to treat you if you are in their position. You treat them the same way. If we live by that principle, Nigeria will almost become heaven. How many of you know that? And Christians are called to live by that principle and then to extend it, to multiply it. So that others will embrace it and live by it. And the world will be a better place for it. Shout hallelujah. Choose life. Choose life. Choose that you may live. That you may live. Says the Lord. Say. Dear listener, if you want to receive Jesus into your heart as your personal Savior and Lord, say this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I accept I have sinned against you. Have mercy on me and forgive me in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, Wash me with your precious blood and give me grace to live the rest of my life for you. Thank you for making me your child in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And for the rest of our dear listeners, precious Father, bless them and give them the grace to live by the word they have just had, that it might be well with them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God richly bless you. You just listened to Choose Life, a program of All Christians Fellowship Mission. I believe God has touched your life through this message from his servant, Reverend William Okoye, the General Overseer of All Christians Fellowship Mission. This message and several others on CDs, DVDs, and books by Reverend William Okoye are available at number 2, Lagoni Close, off Nile Street, Maitama, Abuja. Get your copies now. For bookings, cancelling, and prayers, call 0803. 0803- 3588-7764. The number again, 0803-588-7764. Or log on to www.acfmission.org. That is www.acfmission.org for resource materials. Join our High Impact Worship Service this Sunday at any of our branch churches nearest to you. Jesus saves, heals, and provides. Let's meet again, same time, same station, next week for another transforming message from Reverend William Okoye. God bless you. Can choose life